how I went from freelancer to agency owner. Hey guys, Kim here today. What I wanted to talk to you about is this exact thing, how to go from basically working on your own to how to growing and managing a team and being the owner of an agency. Like, how does that work? Now, you can probably see behind me in the background, our whole teams here, apart from Ma'am Christie, who's probably somewhere in the background grabbing Instagram stories. Who knows what she actually does every day? I don't know, right? So, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the process and a little bit about what happens and why it's important to know and what are some of the pitfalls that you wanna avoid. So obviously the easiest thing that happens when you start working for yourself as a freelancer is a couple of things. Number one is you have a lot of time freedom, a lot of things to be able to do by yourself. And you go out there and there's probably one or two things that you're really good at. Maybe it's doing, if you're doing Facebook ads, maybe it's doing ads for people, maybe it's doing landing pages, maybe it's doing the sales. And generally what you'll find is there's a key area that you really stick to. And you go, this is me, I'm 100% across this, I am really good at, <clears throat> I am really good at doing this. And you keep doing it over and over again. And what happens is if you're good at what you do, more people wanna come and work with you, right? So you start to get results, you start to provide amazing services to people and amazing outcomes for them, and more and more people come along and they wanna work with you. Now, generally speaking, one of two things happens. Number one is you get a ton of word of mouth business and you keep growing, growing, growing sustainably. Or number two is you start marketing yourself and you start putting yourself out there. Maybe you speak at events, maybe you attend networking functions, maybe you start running your own ads for yourself and you grow that way. And generally what happens is you will hit a threshold, you hit a roof, a ceiling, and not an income ceiling, but a ceiling of what you can do in a day. Because we all, as much as we like to work, only have 24 hours in a day. So you very quickly realize that you can't get more done. You can't just keep going and working 22 hours, sleeping two hours, waking up and keep going. It just doesn't work like that. So then what happens? You go, well, one of two things. Number one, either I get rid of some clients, or number two, I start to grow. And that is generally what I see happen with people. They go, cool, I'm gonna start to grow. So then they look at bringing in someone to start helping them in their business. This is when you start to go from a freelancer to working as part of a team and then running a team. And generally the next set of pitfalls, the next set of objections, the next set of things that happen is number one, probably, this is for most people, is you suck at managing and you suck at leading, right? And that's just cool, we all, we're all from that point, we've all had that happen. And generally what happens is the reason why it happens like that is because you start to give people work that you used to do and you go, no one can do it as good as me. No one can get the same outcome, right? And that's because you don't have the most important factor for helping you grow to become an agency owner, a business owner, which is the transfer of knowledge. And it's very hard. I still have to do it myself every day where it's breaking down and going, cool, what are the things that I know as a byproduct of doing all this work for all this period of time? How can I take that out of my head and how can I transfer that knowledge to someone else? Yes, you can do it in personal tra training someone. Yes, you can do it in a few other different ways and strategies by extrapolating it and sharing it with the new team members. But what most people don't do is they don't document, they don't process, and they don't systemize it. Now, that is where the key comes to allowing you to grow even more. So if you can start to focus on what is the information, what is the knowledge that you have in your head, and how can you ext extract that from your brain, pull it out, literally, put it into documents, into processes, into systems. If you do that, that will allow you to give people the chance of getting to maybe 70%. Maybe you are amazing, right? We all are, right? 70% of what you can do and achieve. Because if you can get to that point, then you can just critique, then you can just give feedback, then you can just help them figure out what are the gaps in what they're doing. And if you do that, that means you'll be able to consistently scale. But then you need to look at the team structure. Right, that is the next big point, is looking at the structure of your team and going, who do I need? What are the key support roles? And look, I know a lot of people like organization charts, but I think really you need to look at what are the key operational areas of a business and then who are the people that I need to fulfill that? Rather than going, oh, we have to have uh, a CEO, a general manager, a manager of this and this and this, all these different things. Looking at what are the key distinctions or the functions of a business? And then who do I need to support that? Can some people be across functions? You know, can someone be in sales manager and, admin, and be an admin? Potentially, can they be in HR? What are the key areas that we need to look at? And identify who falls into that. 
Now, you then need to look at how do you bring people on? And that's the hardest part because it's sometimes really hard to find good people to be able to execute upon. And sometimes if you're a freelancer, you're like, how do you actually find people, right? Because a lot of us, if you're just starting out and maybe you've been working by yourself and freelancing your whole life, if you haven't gone for a job interview, if you haven't gone and applied and done all the things that a lot of other people do, how do you do it? So obviously there's the traditional advertising platforms like Seek and different websites where you can promote and put up and you can share job opportunities. Or also you can look in either existing networks, you can utilize social media platforms to try and drive and bring in the right people as well. And what I find is that if you do multiple of those, then you start to see the right people come in. And a big thing that I really like and that we implemented in our business is internship programs where we can get people to come in and we can see if there's any you know, good talent and if, if it's possible, if there are positions available, not always are there, but then you can look at bringing people in, educating them through your systems and processes and then sometimes maybe if it, the, everything lines up, you'll be able to get good people from that as well. So we've had several interns come and work through with us that do amazing jobs. A couple continued on if we had roles available, but it really allows you to understand, number one, how to manage people and work with people effectively because really interns are not gonna be there all the time. You have to be able to be really specific in the jobs and tasks that you give them so that they can get the best outcome and learn. And then as your uh, business itself, obviously you get the assistance of them helping in certain key areas also. So if you can do that, it builds up to the point where you can then identify exactly how to have a good solar team that concisely brings you, you know, joy and success within your business. Then you've got to look at scale, scaling of marketing, scaling of finances, all these fun things that become up next because then you transition from a freelancer to really not doing the work you used to love and do. And what happens is most of the time, if something goes wrong, things change, you always fall back into doing the thing that you did at the beginning because that's what brought you success. And that was what generally happens once you get to the 500K million dollar mark per year. If you don't know the next levels of growth, if you're not really willing to surrender and take your hands off the operations, you'll get bought back into it. Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? I'll leave that up to you. It really depends on how much you want to grow in your business, how big you want to get to, but eventually you'll have to do that if you want to be, and not hands off, but if you want to be focusing on other key areas to grow your business, strategic partnerships, joint venture arrangements, uh, speaking, podcasting, whatever that might be for you, it's very hard to do that if you have to do everything else. So that's why having a great team really, 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 really helps you grow. And you know, for us, we look at teams locally and also internationally because not always are the best people sitting right next door, right right in your suburb locally. And now we are probably very different from a lot as well. We have a physical office. This is our team. I didn't walk into a random office and set up a camera and start filming, right? This is our team. This is where we work from every single day. Um, we have great team helping us out here locally, but we also have international help as well. We have people from all over the world in different key areas, whatever it might be, that can help us to fulfill on what we do for our clients. So that's also something to think about is how to bring that on. But then, you know, that's a whole other video around how to manage an outsource team because there's a whole other kettle of fish that goes along with that one. So hopefully you've taken some amazing insights into how you can do and grow from becoming a freelancer to an agency owner. And then hopefully that's giving you some insights and things to think about depending on what level you're at and where you're looking to get to. So if you did like this video, make sure you tap like below, give me a little thumbs up, comment and let us know what you thought. If there's anything we can do to give you better content and help you out even more. And please subscribe so we feel love, you know, Christy, every time we don't get a subscriber and each week she actually cries. She just sits there and is like sobs in the corner. I can't handle it anymore, guys. We need more subscribers to stop Christy from crying. Please, just help. Just help me stop Christy crying. Until next time, guys, I'm Kim. You've been awesome. We'll see you on the next video. Adios.